Now, including Tesla, currently there are 14 plug-in models available from eight automotive manufacturers. The other big players are GM's Bolt and the Nissan Leaf. But sales have been rather disappointing. According to the Electric Drive Transportation Association, only 68,000 plug-in hybrids and all electrics have been sold in the U.S. so far this year. And that compares to 11.7 million cars sold in total. And joining us with more on whether the electric car market has enough power is Philip Ross. He's the senior editor of IEEE Spectrum. And IEEE, by the way, stands for the Institute of Electrical Electronic Engineers. Mm -hmm. Philip, thanks so much for joining us this evening. Thanks for having me. So, Philip, according to your data, how do the electric vehicle sales, the hybrids, compare with those of regular vehicles? It's a small niche market, um, but it's amazing that it got this big this fast. Um, well, not, not quite so amazing when you take into account how much effort governments around the world have put into it. They subsidize it, they provide infrastructure, and that together with the underlying technology, which has gotten better, quite a bit better in recent years, has made it possible to drive in a car and still think it and think it's perfectly fine, even though it's got batteries instead of a gas motor inside. And, and that's one of the big issues, range anxiety. Mm. Drivers being afraid that they'll run out of electricity for the mm. battery and not have anywhere to charge it. Yeah. How is that issue being addressed? Well, the problem with range anxiety is twofold. First, you have to go a long way on a charge. Secondly, you have to be sure of getting a charge when you get to the end. And for that, you need to have charging stations. But it's a chicken and egg problem. If you don't have enough cars, you can't justify building the stations. But then so you, have, doing, yeah. you have the cars like the GM Volt, which combine both gas and a battery. So if you do run out of battery, you can then use gas. That's the whole idea. It's using the gasoline engine as a range extender for the motor. Mm -hmm. um, but then, to some extent, that defeats the point of the electric car, to some extent. Um, in any case, having even the, the hybrid system as a plug-in, which functions mainly as an electric car with a range extender, is an amazing advancement. I wouldn't have thought it possible 10 years ago. OK, we've made a lot of advancements. As you've said, governments have put in a lot of incentives. Mm -hmm. But electric cars still aren't really there in terms of total sales. What are the major factors holding the electric vehicle market back right now? Cost. Um, these batteries are vastly better than what was around 20 years ago when General Motors had its EV1 lead-acid batteries, the sort of things they use to, to start your car now. But they're not good enough, and they're not cheap enough yet. Uh, they're getting better at a slow and steady rate, and in 10 years, perhaps they'll be good enough, except that by then the com internal combustion engine will improve as well. What we need is a really big breakthrough, which might come in 15 or 20 years with something like lithium air batteries, which are now just in the laboratory. So you're saying the big issue right now is the cost of the lithium-ion battery. Yes, $10,000 or so for a, for a car. And they may not last as long as the car itself in some cases. Well, a new study by PwC shows that the economy of scale will come a long way with regards to reducing the overall cost of these batteries. If you build something in mass, it gets cheaper by the unit. That's true. And that's happening now. But uh, you're competing against a technology, gasoline engines, that's been going on for 100 years and has been built in stupendous numbers. And it's very te technologically sophisticated, and it's getting better, too. It's a, it's a moving target you're shooting at here. We've had a couple of safety concerns, as we saw in Mark News report, a couple of Tesla cars catching fire, mm. proportionately really smaller than compared to regular combustion via, uh, engine cars. Cars, cars go blow up in different ways, depending <laughs> on how they're made. Um, this is a safe car. No one has really made any case that it isn't. But when it does blow up, it'll blow up in a different way than the one you're used to, and that makes for good coverage. So from a safety perspective, is that any kind of concern? No. Now, gas prices have been declining recently. Mm -hmm. Has that had a major impact on the sales of electric vehicles? At what point does the equation measure out, mm -hmm. pay extra for an electric vehicle and save money on gas? or just buy a regular vehicle? Well, don't forget the government's got its finger around the balance. But if you took away the finger, it wouldn't make sense even now. On the other hand, if gas got a lot cheaper or a lot more expensive, it may not matter that much to the people who are buying the high-end cars at the moment, because they tend to be rich anyway. And they love their cars. Um, to find out the answer to your question, you'd have to say, what would it be like if the average person were driving an electric car? Then it would be very critically important how expensive it was to, to fuel it. Well, you mentioned the wealthy, and BMW has just come out with its own electric car, and that is seen as the big competitor. 
to the Tesla Model S. What do you think about that? The i3. Next year, they're going to have something called the i8, which will knock your socks off. Much better. But quite Why? expensive. Why uh, is that much better? Oh, they're going to have laser headlights and a lot of other things. Uh, they'll have, uh, <laughs> it'll be a high-tech car that you haven't seen before in this field, except it'll be very expensive. Um, the Tesla is, for the most part, expensive. The cheaper models that Tesla is contemplating will have uh, rather less range, I understand. Um, and they still will be rather expensive. And this is after taking into account government subsidies. From an engineering point of view, mm -hmm. what is your outlook for Tesla? For Tesla, the company? Well, uh, if you'd asked me that before, I would have been more pessimistic. But Elon Musk has beaten me every time. He's quite the impresario, and he's a very good engineer. I think um, for a startup, and it's still a startup, they have to be given great credit. I don't know that I would invest in them now, though. They're, Stock price looks frothy to me as a non-financier. Mm -hmm. At about $165 per share, and they only delivered 5,500 cars this quarter, mm. expected 6,000 cars next quarter. It's based on hope. Based <laughs> on hope. Hope in the Hyperloop. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much. Philip Ross, senior editor of IEEE Spectrum.